Hello, my friends. Remember me, Mrs. Diaz? Well, I am back to give you a lesson on observing and recording local weather. So it's lesson 1.3, observing and recording local weather, part one. On the last lesson that you had with scientist Kate, she talked to you about different types of temperature. She showed you how she uses her thermometer to gauge different types of temperature. Now, with that information and that information that you had before learning about different types of weather, we're going to do some observing and recording. I am so excited for this lesson because you have learned so many tools as scientists. And in this lesson, you'll be able to use them. Now, all you need for this lesson is someone to listen to you for your observations and also to look at your recordings. And if there's no one around, that's okay. I don't have anyone around here either, but I have my monkey Chunky. He's here for me and he's a good listener. And he's also a good observer because he has his eyes and his ears. So that works out too. Plus I'm here with you. Remember, I'm always here. I can see you. I can hear you. Are you ready to begin? Let's begin. So on our first activity, we're gonna be observing local weather. But before we do that, I wanna make sure that you know what the word local means. When we're looking at local weather, it is the weather around us, where we live. So depending on where you live, that's what the weather that you're going to have with you. So you're gonna be observing the local weather, the weather that is around you. So as weather scientists that you are already, we have a very important question that we need to ask and see what we can think about and what ideas do we have about around this. So the question is, how do we describe weather? So we learned that there are different types of weather, but we also learned that there's different ways of describing weather. So think for a minute, think of all the things that scientist Kate has taught you, all the things that Mrs. Diaz has taught you, because you have a lot of new ideas, I know. All right, so we're thinking about ways in which we describe weather. And I know that in the last lesson, you learned about that. So let's review and let's take a look at it. So here you can see, it says, well, we have learned about how to describe weather so far. This is what we have learned so far. So we've learned that there are different types of weather. We learned that weather can be sunny, cloudy, rainy, windy, snowy. And when we describe the weather, we talk about the temperature. So if it's sunny, it could be very hot or just hot or warm. When it's cloudy, it could be cool. And sometimes it could be cloudy and warm. When it's rainy, it could be maybe cool, maybe cold sometimes warm depending on where you live. When it's windy, you can describe the temperature as being cold or cool or sometimes very cold because it depends what kind of a wind we have. And then when it's snowy, we know that it tends to be cold and very cold and sometimes cool because if it's a snowy, if it's a snowy day that has a lot of sun, it could be one of those nice crisp uh, cool days. All right, so now, in the last lesson, you went outside to observe the weather. Today, we will go outside again and use our new words to describe the temperature. We can see if the weather today is the same or different from last time. So when I say last time, I want you to think about when Miss Kate and you, uh, scientist Kate, I'm sorry, and you uh, had the lesson and you went outside, what was it? What was it that time? And how is it different? It could be the same or it could be different. 
So if it's the same, then nothing has changed. But if it's different, what makes it different from last time? So just think about that for a minute. I'm going to give you a minute to think about it. Hmm. Just think. Hmm. Okay. So what are the different words we have learned to describe different types of weather? What are the different words we have learned that describe temperature? So we've learned many, many words. So we've learned that it could be sunny. We've learned that it could be cloudy. We've learned that it could be windy or rainy, snowy, right? Those are different types of weather. But we've also learned describing words. So we've learned words like cool, warm, hot. We can also say very cold, very hot. So it's ways of describing different types of weather. See all the information that you have? It's amazing. So now, with an adult, I want you to go outside and look and see what the weather is like today. I want you to observe. Remember that when we observe, we're using our sense of sight, right? And sometimes even how our body feels, we can tell what kind of a weather it is. So when you go out there with the person that you're with, I want you to discuss the weather with your partner. And I want you to tell your partner how hot or how cold it is today. So the two words we're using right now is hot or cold. Is it hot? Is it cold? Okay, I'm going to give you a few minutes. Now, if there's not an adult there with you, I want you to look out the window. And you can still get a feel by looking. And you can make a guess of what kind of weather you have today. All right? So I'm going to give you a few minutes. I'm going to take a peek because I don't really have a door. I live in an apartment. So I'm going to look out the window and I'm going to make my observations. All right? All right. At the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Let's go. Okay, I'm ready when you are. I, I see some people are still outside. I can see them. Okay, let's wait. Let's wait for them. Great, I see everyone back. How awesome. All right. So, we made observations. Now, when scientists make observations, they record their observations. So, what does it mean to record? Well, to record can be just to take a piece of paper and write down the observations. You know why they write down the observations? So that they don't forget. So that next time they make another observation, they can compare. Remember how I asked you before how the weather was different from last time? That's how you compare. So now we're going to go into recording local weather. Again, the word local means the weather and where we live, where we are at the moment. So scientists often need to remember what they observe. What could they do to make sure they remember the weather that they observe today? Say the word I just told you. Yes, record. They record their information. So in looking here, it says 
scientists record there's the word record their observations they draw them or they write them down so some of you are thinking oh but miss diaz i don't know how to write the words look it says draw so if you can write the word you can draw the word do you know how to draw sunny right and you know how to draw different things so you just what you do is that you take your drawing to look like the word that you're trying to say and that's okay that's part of recording and i know you guys can do that because i've seen you do that all the time now if you're not sure what to draw you can look at the pictures on our what we know about weather chart and here you see so here's for sunny cloudy rainy windy snowy and here are all the temperatures so here we have very hot and look it's red so if you don't know how to write very hot you could just put red in your picture and it'll show that it's hot or just hot very hot is red i'm sorry and then for hot is orange for warm is yellow for cool is green for cold is blue and for very cold it's purple okay so that'll give you an idea of what to do and this assignment you're going to do after i am done teaching this lesson you're going to take something to write with and something to write on it could be anything that you can write on and you're going to create your own chart just like mine and so you see i says here the weather i observed today was and if you don't know how to write this that's okay just go ahead and draw what you observed today right and that will be you recording what you observed outside so now we're going to talk about what scientists do so those of you that have had these lessons before in a classroom we always keep a chart in which we add the stuff that the scientists do so as we learn to be weather scientists we will be doing things that all scientists do to learn about the world around it we will use a chart to help us remember and think about the way we are scientists because scientists use many tools in order to do their job so this chart it says what scientists do to answer questions scientists ask questions about things they want to understand this helps scientists say what they wonder and what to find out more about remember that when we wonder we do what tell me you know yes we're curious about something so we ask questions we observe we record until we find the answer that's what a good scientist does so here we continue to look at the chart and if you hear scientists observe the world around them they look they listen they feel right and also they go further remember we talk about touching and tasting so scientists do they use all their senses in order to get to the answer that they're trying to find out and then once they have all that information they record it which is what you're going to do after this lesson so scientists do many things to answer their questions as we do new things as scientists we will add them to this chart so in our in our next lessons you're going to see how we're going to be adding more stuff to our chart but for today we've learned that scientists make observations and once they make observations they record their observation okay in order to get to their answers once again i really enjoyed spending time with you and you are learning so many wonderful things and i will see you in the next lesson 1.3 part 2 I'll see you soon. Have a great day. 
Hello, Mrs. Diaz is back to teach you lesson 1.3, Observing and Recording Local Weather Part 2. Remember that in our last lesson, we learned all about observing and recording as scientists, especially as weather scientists. We also learned that local meant the weather around us now. So, we're going to continue with part two of this lesson and this time we're going to deal with a problem something that we need to try to figure out ourselves using all the tools that we have learned as scientists so all you need is good observation skills maybe a stuffy to listen to you or someone at your home that's willing to spend some time to listen otherwise you know that i am always here to listen Okay, let's begin. So we're gonna have an activity called Introducing and Discussing the Playground Problem. In this activity, last night, I received the most amazing email. In this email, they are telling me of a situation that is happening in two different schools. So the email says, Dear students, that's right, dear students, because they, wanna, they want to give you the problem. They want you to figure it out because they know that you are weather scientists. So it says, hello from Carver and Woodland Elementary. We hear that you are learning to be weather scientists and we have an interesting weather problem for you. Wow, that's huge. Let's go on and see what else they want. Our schools are in the same area, but our students feel very different. Temperatures when they go out to the playground during morning and afternoon recess. Hmm. And it is not always comfortable for them. As principals, we want our students to be happy and comfortable. Hopefully, you can figure out why the two playgrounds get warmer in different ways. So let's think about this. They're in the same area, two different playgrounds, but they're feeling different temperatures. So the email finishes by saying, we look forward to hearing from you, Ms. Hood and Mr. Jenkins. That is one interesting problem. Let's continue and find out what other information we have. So, I'm going to show you a picture of the two playgrounds that the principal sent to me. And we are going to discuss, we're going to talk about it. You can talk to a partner, you can talk to me, you can talk to your stuffy. And we're going to see how are they different? How are they the same? What, what can we notice? What observations can we make? So the two playgrounds, they have different names. One is called the Carver Playground for that school and the other school at Woodland, Play, the Woodland Playground. Sorry. So looking at the pictures, they look almost the same. I see the same type of equipment to play with. I see sun. I see one is lighter than the other. Did you notice the same thing? What else do you see that's different? I'll let you think. You can tell me. Yes, I noticed that too. Interesting. Let's go on further and see what else we have. So the principal sent us pictures to describe the temperatures in each playground. So let's take a look at that. Here are the pictures. So here we have Carver Playground. Let me fix this a minute, thank you. Here we have Carver Playground. And in this picture, you see that in the first column is nighttime and it's Carver Playground. In the Carver Playground, I can look at the picture before I tell you, I want you to look at it. I want you to think about whether it's cold, it's hot, whether it's daytime or nighttime. We know that this side is all nighttime. So 
So if we look at nighttime, do you think it's hot? Do you think it's cold? Let's make some observations. I think I got it. I think it looks cold and it's nighttime. And I know it's cold because if I look at the little boy in the picture, he's wearing a jacket. So yeah, it's cold. The next one is, and also at, and the woodland playground. So at nighttime, they are the same. In the morning, if we look at the picture, the boy looks like he's cold. He's still wearing a jacket. So I'm thinking that he's cold and maybe a little bit uncomfortable to play. If we look at the woodland playground, her jacket is not she as cold as the boy on the top. So I'm thinking that it's probably kind of nice and probably warm. Warm because I see sun. I see that she's comfortably dressed. So I can assume that it's warm and comfortable. In the afternoon, I can also see in Carver now in the afternoon is warm and comfortable while in the morning it was cold and uncomfortable. Here at the Woodland Park, let me move my picture so you can see. Do you notice that in the morning it was comfortable and it was nice and warm and kids were okay? Here I can see by the way he's dressed that it is very hot. And he's wearing shorts and he's going like this. Usually that means I'm hot. So he looks hot and uncomfortable. Did you see the same things that I saw? Okay, let's move on and see. Let's see what they're telling us now. I'm gonna move myself so you can see me better. All right. When scientists have a new problem to figure out, they think about what ideas they already have. Let's share our ideas about why the playgrounds get warmer in different ways. So here, if we take a good look at this, it says, why do you think the playground gets warmer but in different ways? Why do you think so? With everything that you have learned, why do you think two playgrounds get warmer but in different ways? Let's just think. I just want you to think. What ideas did you come up with? Those sound really interesting. Let's continue and find out what else we can notice. So here it says, what do you think both playgrounds were cold at night and warmer during the day. Why? What is going to make those playgrounds a little bit warmer? What is the difference between the nighttime and the daytime? At nighttime, we have the moon. In the daytime, we have the sun. And one thing we know about the sun is that the, the sun will make things warm, right? And the moon will make things cooler or cold. So what do you think, why do you think the playgrounds were warmer in the afternoon than they were in the morning? What do you think? You know what I think? I think that the longer the sun stays around, the warmer things are going to feel. Just like when you put the oven on, in the beginning it starts getting warm, then it gets warmer, then it gets hotter. Well, that's what the sun does. The longer it remains around, the warmer the place is going to feel. So here we have the afternoon same thing 
why do you think that woodlands is warmer than carvers during the day? Why do you think? Any ideas? I'm not going to give you the answer. We're going to think about it, okay? And in the upcoming lessons, we're going to learn more about this. But for right now, when we're done with this lesson, you could write down your ideas. So, scientists think about cause and effect. Something has to happen in order for things to change. Okay? So we have the cause and then what changes. So cause and effect is when one thing, the cause, makes another thing, the effect, happen. The principles have shown us an effect. The effect is that the playgrounds both get warmer, but one gets even warmer than the other. We need to figure out the cause. We need to figure out what makes the playgrounds get warmer but in different ways. That's a lot, right? But you can do it. I know you can. So, we have interesting, we have a very interesting new problem to solve. Why the two playgrounds get warmer, but in different ways. So, as scientists, we're gonna use all the tools that we can use all of our senses we're going to continue to investigate we are going to read we're going to think and we're going to use all those ideas that we've learned until now so in our next upcoming lessons we're going to continue trying to figure out this big question why do two playgrounds that are in the same area feel different at the same time, okay? So next time we meet, we're gonna know a lot more and you're gonna be full of ideas to share with me. Meanwhile, stay safe, stay curious, and keep investigating. Bye-bye, take care.